Hi, everybody. Welcome to the DRF Breeding Report. Dan Ilman, along with Nicole Russo, who is at the Mammoth Keeneland September Yearling Sale. A very successful first day, Nicole. Lots of big ticket lots. And really, this new format has been very beneficial for the Keeneland Sale. Yeah, Keeneland kind of accomplished phase one of its mission with condensing book one, making it so highly selective for yesterday's session. Comparing the book one final session average to last year's book one average, of course, with that with that book taking place over three days last year, yesterday's average price of 570263 was up 64% over 2016's book one. The median price, 500000 finished up 67%. The, the buyback rate, 34%, kind of a small change from 31% last year. So a very highly selective session definitely uh, worked out yesterday for Keeneland. And now their goal is for that to establish the momentum going forward into book two, which began today here. And of course, with that book being so small yesterday, I think we're going to see a bit of trickle down and of quality horses into the rest of the sales. So they're certainly hoping that that momentum continues. And I think there there are you know very good reasons that it could. Let's take a look at the top five prices. And we're going to notice the great Tappet had a big opening day at Keeneland. The top three sale prices by Tappet including a $2.7 million full brother to Cupid. Yeah, this uh, this is actually a filly, and uh, she became the ninth most expensive filly ever sold at the Keeneland September sale, the most expensive filly sold here since 2008. Uh, out of uh, a mare who was pretty good herself, grade two place, pretty and smart, she's produced Cupid, who is a very consistent multiple grade two winner last year as a three-year-old. He's really stepped up as an older horse to win both his starts this year, including the Gold Cup at Santa Anita earlier. He runs for Coolmore, which purchased him for 900000 as a yearling here a few years back. Coolmore striking again, going to $2.7 million for this filly, who's also a half to a couple of uh, grade three winning fillies and a very quick stakes Indianapolis. Let's take a look at this filly in the ring, uh, tap it out of Pretty and Smart. This is the second seven-figure yearling produced by Pretty and Smart. Dream Team, a full brother to this filly, sold for over a million dollars as a Keeneland September yearling. You really talk about this page, not only Cupid, graded winners, Hart Ashley, Ashley's Kitty, the brilliantly fast Indianapolis. Not only is this filly an extremely promising racehorse prospect, but down the road, could certainly be a tremendous addition to any broodmare band. Yeah, and I'm sure that Coolmore, with its far-reaching international broodmare band, is certainly looking ahead to that as well. They've got so many young stallions that you would think a good tap it there would cross with. Um, and certainly this one, a lot of upside both on the track and as a future broodmare. Let's take a look at the second highest priced offering at $2.6 million. This is a colt by Tappet out of Miss Bezalou. Miss Bezalou, of course, multiple grade one placed, going a route of ground. Perhaps more importantly, a half-sister to Horse of the Year St. Liam and to the dam of Gunrunner, currently the top-rated horse in North America. Yeah, uh, this is this is a family that just keeps producing good horses. It's an active family, as you mentioned, Gunrunner currently out there, who's won three consecutive grade one races to control his own destiny for championship honors. It's the family of Lull, who added another stakes to her resume last weekend at Kentucky Downs. Very active family, classic family. The, this call purchased for $2.6 million by uh, the Whisper Hill Farm of Mandy Pope. And Pope, you know from building an outstanding broodmare band. She's started, She's bought Colts in recent years here in partnership. And I was surprised that she didn't have a partner yesterday on this call because that's her usual modus operandi. And it, it really says to me that she really likes this horse and was prepared to do whatever it took to get him.
Let's take a look at this very striking Tappet Colt that went for $2.5 million out of the tremendous race mare Tiz Miz Sue, who earned a 104 buyer speed figure when winning the Grade 1 Ogden Phipps handicap going a route of ground at Belmont. Tiz Miz Sue was a really good racehorse. This second dam also a graded stakes winner. The fourth dam a stakes winner from the family of Cozine. This horse has classic potential written all over his page. Very much so, and purchased by Shadwell, which is obviously an international outfit. You know that Chappet can get a turf horse. You've got Cozine down there deep in the family, but his Miss Sue, obviously a dirt runner by Tiz now. So this one could probably go either way for an operation that could and would campaign him either way. Tiz Miss Sue, just an ultra-tough, gritty sort of race mare. Tap it, the star of opening day, but not to be outdone. The tremendous stallion war front with the next two offerings we're going to show. Let's look at this colt out of Io Tapa, who won the grade one Clement, Clement L. Hirsch, the grade one Vanity. She won the Vanity with a 109 buyer speed figure by over 10 lengths and also finished third in the Breeders' Cup distaff. And as we see, this is a big, good-looking colt. He really is. He was one that I went out and looked at on the sale grounds a couple days prior to his trip through the auction ring. Just a really strapping, solid, impressive individual, I thought. And Ayotapa, really, I think, a little bit of an underrated race there that some people have forgotten about a little bit. Uh, a multiple grade one winner, and then she had the misfortune at the end of her career there to tangle with a couple of champions, finishing third to the holder in the Zenyatta, and then third behind Uncapsule in the Breeders' Cup distaff. But a really good race mare, uh, sold for $2.8 million to the China Horse Club at the conclusion of her career, so you knew that her first foal, especially being by Warfront, is going to be kind of a commercial hit. Completing the top five is this filly in a tremendous European international page. This filly is by Warfront, out of Aloof by Galileo, the second dam, a champion overseas. This horse has a tremendous turf pedigree, and we see a big name, a big recent name in the pedigree in Churchill. Yeah, another active family for sure. Uh, crossing Warfront over a Galileo mare, or vice versa. That cross has been commercial gold in recent years. Uh, Larry Best, who's kind of a newer player at the higher end of the market, uh, going out at LM to purchase this one, one of several seven-figure purchases for him this year. Uh, Aloof, as you mentioned, is out of the group one winner Airwave, a multiple stakes producer, and one of her stakes-winning daughters, produced to that group one winner, Churchill, another active European family. We expected a blockbuster opening session at the Keeneland September sale. We were not disappointed. And for all the latest news and notes directly from the source, follow Nicole on Twitter at DRF Russo and follow all of our correspondents from DRF Breeding on Twitter at DRF Breeding. We'll see you next week on the DRF Breeding Report.